Everyone remembers Hercules and Xena, the two action comedy shows set during the era of the Greek gods. It was a big thing for almost a decade, so I guess Canada wanted to be a part of that pie. So Alliance Atlantis, who's helped a lot of series before, Tech War, Reboot, Earth Final Conflict, and Beast Wars, created the Adventures of Sinbad, basically live action Aladdin. If you love magic, wizards, witches, demons, devils, this is for you. Edna Ha created the series. He also helmed the Honey I Shrunk the Kids series at the same time. So both shows shared similarities, even some actors. Sinbad is similar to Herc and Xena, but it goes more lighthearted, very hammy. The actors will overact on purpose, but they did it with good intentions. It does have drama. It's not constantly being stupid. The series, of course, follows Sinbad, the swashbuckling man of legend. He returned from a long journey at sea. The place changed in Baghdad. The Grand Vizier has taken over. Things became more strict. Very much like Robin Hood, which caused Sinbad to get in trouble, defending the city from guards that were not so kind. Of course, he gets thrown into the dungeon to be beheaded. This begins the chain of events that starts the series. Effort went into Sinbad. We got a two hour pilot, really cool locations. Their budget wasn't amazing. You could tell they were docked at port, but they did do CG effects a fair bit. Nowadays it would be called cheap, but you could see everyone had fun making it. They knew they would be compared to Herc and Xena, so they went with focusing on more magical villains and heroes. The show was mainly filmed in two places, Canada and Africa. You don't have to worry about everything looking like Stargate and being trapped in generic forests. It's not just about Sinbad. He has a crew and family join him, his ship, the Nomad. Most lands know of Sinbad, so he gets a bit of pampering, although he will get attacked every so often because someone has to prove they're better than the mighty Sinbad. The ship itself is strong, able to hold out against several monsters in hurricane-like conditions, including a serpent. Keep trying to remind us of Hercules. One of Sinbad's trusted right-hand men is Rodengar, specialized in knives, stealth, and tracking tactics. Rodengar is the best at forming plans for the crew, extremely disciplined, allows nothing to distract him. He unfortunately got his tongue cut out, leaving him a mute for the entire run. Rongar did get one episode showing his life before he lost his voice, but never actually spoke during that episode. I will nitpick, this is a world of magic. Can't someone make him a new tongue? Next in line is Dubar, Sinbad's older brother. He's always getting himself in trouble. He has his heart in the right place, but he isn't the subtlest of people, to put it lightly. Overconfident, since Dubar possesses Hulk-like strength, prefers to punch and ask questions later, usually is at odds with Rongar, so Sinbad has to keep the two of them balanced. His great strength is an amazing asset. He's one of the reasons how the ship is able to survive the Deadly Sea, but sometimes I don't think it's worth it. As a fun bonus, Dubar is played by George Buza, who also voices Beast from the 92 X-Men animated series, as well as a recurring character on the Honey, I Shrunk the Kids series. It's weird hearing the calm Beast yelling and screaming at invading pirates. Unlike Hercules, Sibet has the talents of Farouz, the ship's inventor, able to create weapons and even act like a detective, always going for the logical answer to problems. He also will not take magic at face value, kind of like Mr. Fantastic. He's the most comical, inventing stuff like dynamite, bicycles, and even a flying machine. The show's not historically accurate, so don't even try to explain things but did get some good episodes on his own. One time being a king and trying to run a kingdom, it blew up in his face, but it made him learn not to just think about the situation, but also understand the problems at a human level. Once Sidbad gathered his old crew and thanks to the Grand Vizier being friends with him, getting him out of jail, sent them on a mission to rescue the kidnapped Kalafi from Turok. Not that Turok. Turok and his daughter Romina, two horrific sorcerers hell-bent on killing and taking over the lands. Sinbad is very episodic, but has a tight overarching storyline through the two seasons. Sinbad does need help in order to fight magic, no one's magical, so he asks for the powerful Dim Dim, think human Yoda, and with his apprentice Maeve, who became an important part of the crew. At first, she butted heads with everyone. Most were not accustomed to serve with a woman on the Nomad, and of course they played up the tension between her and Sinbad, but the relationship with Maeve was quite surprising. She didn't fall in love with Sinbad. Sinbad more saw her like family, both helping out each other, of course getting into lots of arguments and trouble. Maeve just saw him as the hero who could do no wrong, the pretty boy trying to take advantage, especially after Dimdim was thrown into a void by one of Turok's men, which 
became the search for Dim Dim season, she also has her own companion, Dermot, a bird who actually is her brother. He was cursed by a spell from Romina. So Maeve's real goal was to break the spell. Maeve and Sinbad were forced to lean on each other's strengths in order to beat Turok. Surprisingly, the show did something unexpected. They got rid of the main baddie in the pilot, with him being replaced by his daughter, Romina. Julianne Morris was the best at going for the super cheese in her acting. The writers for Sinbad were really good at doing corny without turning it into garbage, so the directors knew how to play out scenes that made everything work. But if you can't stand over the top acting, Sinbad won't be for you. You'll be constantly rolling your eyes. There were not that many secondary characters since the crew couldn't stay in one area for long, but they did get one. Ronan, who originally was a bad guy, got turned back to good. This is the only time I saw Von Flores play a good guy. He played Sandoval in Earth's Final Conflict. Rest of the season was trying to avoid Romina's traps, helping people from monsters, sometimes helping the monsters, with a nice season finale. Romina attempts to resurrect her decapitated father, getting help from Scratch, who's basically supposed to be the devil. The series was doing great. Got renewed for a second season, but a few problems did crop up. Jacqueline Colleen, who plays Maeve, was separated from her family for the whole year while she filmed all the exterior material in South Africa. She didn't like it, so Colleen left the show off screen. When Maeve left, the series really changed. Season 1 was campy, season 2 became more serious. Nothing overboard, but it had bigger stories. To deal with the cast change, a new character was created to fill in the spot. Her name was Bryn. Bryn was a mystery. It all started in the beginning where the Nomad was caught in a huge storm. Maeve was knocked overboard and went missing while Sinbad was washed on some island. Zelda much? where he found Bryn. Now, I didn't talk about this before, but Sinbad and Bryn have this rainbow bracelet. They have no idea where it came from, just one day they found it on them. It's been a thing since season one. The bracelet story was never fully answered, so my guess was whoever put it on them was testing people of high caliber. In Sinbad's case, being a leader and an exceptional fighter, while Bryn was amazing at magic, although she lost her memory, had no idea where she came from. There was an episode that dealt with an alien spaceship, yeah. It was implied that the bracelets could have originated from space. So basically, Sinbad came up with the plot of Ark before Ark. It took a while to get used to Bryn. She's very reserved, so it clashed with the rest of the cast. I, I never hated her. She was a good addition, but couldn't replace Maeve. Another odd choice was that Romina did not appear at all in season two. There's no real answer to why. So the series continued on, journeying through many lands, although they loved recycling a city set made in season two, which was way too obvious. Ronin, the samurai warrior, came back. They dealt with more natural issues like plague or horrible rulers they had to stop. A few times Sinbad being accused for murder. Dermot never left the show. He stayed on as the bird, helping wherever he could. The writing really improved the series. The actors did change a bit for the second year since it was meant to be less hammy, but they didn't make the show like Hercules. Without Romina, the series finale was the return of Scratch, aka the devil, trying to convince Sinbad to become evil. He always wanted to corrupt Sinbad, I guess because he's so pure of heart it would be a boon to make him fall under his control, but he got help from a woman, making him see through his tricks. She was actually Sinbad's dead mother. Dubar never told Sinbad who she was in the end. I guess it was his way in protecting him from the pain. She died when he was young, so he never knew her. The series was still doing great with the third and final season plan, but something went wrong with contracts? So the show just disappeared. I never knew what happened to it. Ed Naha did at least give some plot points that he wanted to hit in the final year. Turok and Romina were set to come back. Romina was to be more powerful. Turok surprisingly would be neutral in the season, helping out Sidbad in cases. What happened mainly was that Turok was resurrected in the season one finale, but he was just being used as a tool for Scratch and Romina to kill Maeve and Sidbad. He didn't like being used, so he was like, yep, I'm helping Sinbad out. Maeve wasn't set to return, but what had happened to her was that Dim Dim saved her during the storm and kept her safe. So she wasn't killed off. Bryn's past was that she was supposed to be the sister of Romina. That's why she knew how to use magic and probably why Romina was missing from season two. The last bit of info that would have happened in the real series finale, Turok would have killed Romina, breaking Dermot's spell, then fully answer the rainbow bracelets. What I guessed from all that is that the rainbow bracelets could have been given to magic wielders so that the aliens understood how that power worked. I know Sinbad can't use magic, but his mother came back as a ghost 
and was able to do magical things. So it's possible that Sinbad does possess a power, which could be why he's good at surviving and fighting, as well as Doombar's super strength. Sinbad stands up really well rewatching it. I really love that while the show was very simple, it had a story that built onto itself. The only thing that wasn't good was that most of the crew got buried over time. Dubar, Farouz, and Dermot got pushed to the wayside for Sinbad and Brynn's story. Maybe if season three had gotten made, this could have been corrected. It's always good series being screwed up. I wish series like this would come back. We need new goofy light shows out there. Simple beginning, middle, and end standalone episodes. It's dumb. We went from the 80s and 90s that heavily pushed standalone for syndication reasons, but then we went into overdrive and making serialized shows all the time. I want both types. Sometimes I don't want to follow an endless story where plots get resolved four years down the road. It's almost as bad as shows just being dark and gritty. There's very little variety out there. Both seasons of Sinbad were released on DVD in Canada only. Not sure if it's on Netflix or something. I say check it out, especially if you like Herc and Xena. But thanks for checking out the video. Subscribe if you want to see more from me. And if you remember a movie or a show from the past that's long been forgotten, good or bad, leave it as a suggestion below. I'm always on the lookout for obscured stuff.